If you're ever curious what it's like to write a PhD dissertation, well, here you go. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a fourth year PhD candidate in history and African American studies living in London and working on my dissertation. And today I'm taking you along for another Dissertation Diaries episode because we have a lot of work to do and I'm partnering with Transcribus to transcribe a bunch of the documents that I need to review for my dissertation. I'm currently working on pulling a written sample together for fellowship applications. That way, hopefully I can get some funding to remain in the UK. And so I'm gonna take you along for the process of working on my dissertation and showing you how it is that I work with archival records. I oftentimes talk about the general process of writing and working on a dissertation, but I figured today I would give you a close up look at how it is that I go about this process because it is daunting and I am just chipping away at it bit by bit. So if you're looking for a little extra motivation today, or you're currently going through this process and you're doing this right alongside me, then go ahead, buckle up and let's get to work. For those of you that have been following along throughout this dissertation diary series or have been following since I started my PhD, then you'll know that this process has been a whole new challenge. What I hadn't quite expected was how much this freedom of schedule and not being tied to the university directly would impact my workflow. While it is an immense privilege to have so much freedom within my time, I often find that I'm just struggling to figure out what it is that I'm actually supposed to be doing. And sure, I meet with my advisor once a month and I've had enough academic training to begin figuring out what it is that I'm meant to be doing. But with a project that's this complex and that is intended to be over 100,000 words, I often find myself jumping between the primary sources and the secondary literature and just not quite sure where my voice fits into all of it. What I guess I'm trying to say is that I don't have it figured out and this video is essentially an ode to the ever challenging process. I did some initial prep and now it is time to do a little bit of reading. I have quite a bit of secondary literature that I want to work through on Maryland and I need it to point me to the archives that I need to look at for the different court records because I know that a lot of the court records for Maryland in particular are now housed at the Library of Congress, but some of them are digitized and some of them are a little bit scattered. Don't know Maryland nearly as well as I know Virginia. So I am just going to work through a couple chapters of this particular book. So I'm gonna give myself a two hour block to get working on the secondary literature. And then I need to switch gears and focus on transcribing. So I'm basically just time blocking what I'm doing for the dissertation because at the moment I just have the full day working on the dissertation and that just feels a little overwhelming because I'm not entirely sure what to do. So I am starting with secondary literature for two hours, then I'm gonna go to transcribing for a couple of hours and then working on the database. That is my running plan at the moment. We'll see how it goes. This is a quick intermission to say that when I am reading secondary literature, I am so prone to distraction. For example, I started this article, I got one paragraph in and then wanted to go look up one of the citations. One thing that I learned through my reading practice in preparation for comprehensive exams and on working towards my prospectus, as well as when I filmed the Rebecca Kwong writing routine video, is that I need to make myself just focus and not worry about taking notes or looking things up until I am done with the actual document. And so this is just a quick note that if you start a document and you immediately find yourself wanting to go down rabbit holes, try to resist the urge, write it down, 
come back to it later. I'm going to read through this document. I will take notes on it when I am done reading. I'm saying this as much for you as I am saying it for myself. All right, I'm in desperate need of a break and it is time for some Chinese food. I've been following this one food blogger who's currently in Shanghai and has been posting about all the things that she's eating and I became incredibly envious and so decided that I would order some Chinese food in. So I've got some chasabao, pot sticker, hagao, and then I got some dan dan noodles for after. So I'm gonna watch the Buccaneers Take a little 20 minute break and then get back to reading. A couple hours into working on the dissertation on this day, I just began to feel really frustrated. And it's not just my writing practice that I find difficult and the roadblocks within what some call writer's block, but also just not quite feeling like I have enough information. Unlike other fields of study, it feels as though doing a history PhD is this constant back and forth of looking for sources, finding a few, beginning to work on your assessments, reading the secondary literature, and then feeling like you need to go back to the archive. Either that, or maybe I'm just doing this process incorrectly, but because I have such a wide array of sources that I have to look at, and because they're so geographically diverse, I am just finding it really challenging to figure out what my next step is actually meant to be. So I was feeling quite frustrated and actually decided to call it a night. research assistant and also camera assistant this morning. Hi. Got some content for Christmas out in front of Ralph on New Bond Street. And now Mimi's off to work and I am off to go work on the dissertation back at home. home I have changed clothes into sweatpants because it is now data collection and transcription time. I was not feeling it last night when I got back from the gym and I'm very glad that I decided to take the rest of the evening off because I feel fresh and ready to get at it today. I had such a nice outing this morning to meet up with Mimi on New Bond Street and get some photos. I just didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to take some photos with the Christmas lights and everything. Now it is time to get to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin working on some General Assembly documents that I have from the National Archives. They're from around 1650 to 1660 and the handwriting is a bit challenging. So I'm going to need Transcribus to help me. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Transcribus, grab the images that I took when I was at the archives and get to work. Now comes the fun work of being a historian, which is actually working with archival records and working with Transcribus makes this a hundred times easier. After uploading my documents, it was time to decide which text recognition was going to work for the documents that I had. Today, all the documents that I was transcribing were handwritten and they were written in the mid 17th century. The embedded text recognition software within Transcribus is broken up into these different categories and you can decide which language your document is and whether it's handwritten or whether it's in print, but you can also look for systems that have been created specifically for the time period that you're looking at. So I found some that were specifically designed for the early modern period and set it to work on my document. 
What's really cool about these different text recognition systems embedded within Transcribus is that they're tested on thousands of different documents, and the more documents it has to read and then are edited by scholars, we have the ability to actually improve the software over time. So the more that we contribute to usage of this software, the better it gets. Here is an example of the transcript that it pulled for this document. I will say that this particular legal record is incredibly difficult to read, and I found that the text recognition was nearly spot on. One thing that's really challenging about early modern records is that oftentimes the actual spelling is slightly different than what we would use in the 21st century. And so I'm going and doing a second reading to make sure that everything that it captured is accurate. And anytime I found something that was misspelled or that just didn't quite get it right, I went ahead and made some minor edits. In addition to this, you can actually add these tags. So as you can see here, it shows a couple of different options such as a person or a place, and it will then highlight these things so that way it's easier to find later on. But Transcribus has really been an absolute game changer for me because as someone who was trained in the 18th century, where the documents are written a little bit more standard in terms of script, I have found that we using softwares like Transcribus not only improves my own workflow, but it actually has taught me how to read these documents even better. Paleography is something that we are not taught, or at least that I wasn't taught as a graduate student. And so being able to read alongside the software and see what it picked up on has made this process so much easier. Well, thanks to Transcribus, I somehow have managed to transcribe three different documents. And this includes the document that I found in the archives at Oxford that I made a Dissertation Diaries episode about. So if you want to go watch that video, then it's going to be linked in the description as well as in the card. But I want to sing the praises of Transcribus because not only did I mention them in my PhD workflow video, but this is an AI system that has been created by academics for academics to benefit from a wide array of data sets. So not only can Transcribus actually transcribe handwritten documents from the 17th century that I myself have trouble transcribing, but it also has the ability to transcribe various languages. And as you saw, you can actually make edits within the app and also tag the documents. They have trialed so many different documents to ensure that the AI system is as accurate as possible. And academics and scholars from across various fields have been contributing to this database. And the more documents that this AI system has to transcribe, the better it's going to get. So I began using this about a year and a half ago. And even in the time since I began using it, thousands of other documents have been reviewed by Transcribus's software, which means that now when I use it, it is so much more accurate. And the challenge with early modern archival records, as someone who works on the early modern period, is not just the handwriting. It's also that they use a variety of different spellings. And while there is some formula to the way that they write, because I'm looking at archival records from across different colonies, from parliament, from personal papers, there's not really a whole lot of cohesion. And what makes my job so much easier is having Transcribus as a research assistant, essentially, to help me simplify the process of transcribing. So without further ado, I highly recommend checking out Transcribus for yourself. And I just want to say a special thank you to the Transcribus team. This is a dream partnership for me. As a historian, I created that PhD workflow video and someone on their team saw it and wanted to collaborate with me. And I just love getting to work with companies that create such incredible software. And this is a team that is constantly working on improving their product. And they have conferences every year in order to improve the software. And I just think that that is so incredible. I love working with education technology companies. And I'm just so excited that they wanted to work together and that you get to benefit from this partnership by checking out the link below and using Transcribus within your own workflow. It's now time to get back to work. I am going to look at some of the Virginia legislative documents. I find that it works best if I do 
about an hour or two of transcribing and then switch gears and look at documents that have already been transcribed just because it gives my brain a little bit of a break and I can begin working on actually compiling my database. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears, jump into some legislative records and take you along for the rest of today. had such a good dissertation day. I got a couple hundred words on paper. I found some records and was able to transcribe pieces that were actually beneficial to the written sample that I have to write. It was such a good session. However, my partner is now on a team call and I just cannot write when there's any other noise going on. So I'm gonna take a little break. I've got my teacup with me and Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I picked this book up over the weekend and I am about 70 something pages in. I was reading it on the tube this morning and let me tell you, it is really difficult for me to start anything new, but now that I'm about 70 pages in and I have a little better sense of the characters, I'm loving it. I'm gonna go ahead and just chill out, take a little break, do a little bit of reading. There's still a bit more work that I wanna do on the dissertation, but I feel like I made such good progress today and I'm feeling quite good about the direction that things are heading. So I'm not quite done yet, but I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. Since I can't really write when my partner is working and that's gonna be my excuse, so that way I can do some reading. Where are you going? We have now made it to the end of today's video. I had a nice little study session with Katie before heading off to the gym and came back at dinner with my partner. And now it is time to wrap up for bed. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Dissertation Diaries in partnership with Transcribus. If you wanna go ahead and check out Transcribus for your own projects, then go ahead and check out the links below. Thank you to their team for working with me and thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna stick around for the rest of the series and watch me try to write this entire dissertation, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Bye everyone.